All right, so we're going to go into looking at defining electric current and defining resistance and so forth. So there's quite a few definitions here. Um, as if you can go through and if you can have this document open that you can be taking them directly from there, that just makes it uh, really quite easy. Now, this whole definition of electric uh, current is a bit different from what we have done. So far, we've used the formula that Q is equal to I times T, where I is a symbol for the electric current. This is this I is for your uh, electric current. And your Q is the amount of charge. It's basically the number of electrons, the amount of that charge stuff that we have. So I is equal to Q over T. So I is the rate of flow of charge. So if I've got 5 amps in a circuit, if I've got a, a current of 5 amps, basically it means that corresponds to 5 coulombs per second. That's the amount of charge passing a point per second. We could convert that to the number of electrons. We could calculate the number of electrons because we know that each electron has 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So you could work out the number of electrons passing a point. It's something very large. It's a large number. But in actual fact, to define electric current, it's not done in terms of that. So this is not used in the definition. All right. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. I got you. I mean, that's important, but uh, it's not used in our definition. How we define our electric current is given over here in number 12. It says electric current. Current is defined in terms of the force per unit length between parallel ca current carrying conductors. Note, one ampere of current is the amount of current in each of two infinitely long straight wires one meter apart experiencing a magnetic force per unit length of 2 times 10 to the negative 7 newtons. This is your definition of current. Okay, so I'm going to explain it. Now, we're actually going to try and replicate this situation, but it so turns out that when you've got two conductors, in other words, two pieces of wire, all right, two pieces of copper wire, for instance, they are parallel and they are one meter apart. If they're one meter apart, all right? Each of them has got a current of one ampere. One ampere, okay? Then per meter, per meter, these two conductors will experience or exert a force of two times 10 to the negative seven Newtons per meter. All right, it so works out. Yeah, these these conductors actually will exert a force in each other, and that's how they define an ampere. That that the that the the actual wires will actually exert a force on each other. Now we're going to actually investigate. We're going to see which direction why this happens in our next topic in unit six. We're going to look at that. But what actually happens is that you would see, when we set this up, hopefully, you will see that these wires will actually move apart or try to move apart or move together. They don't say there's a, there's a magnetic field. They, they both produce magnetic fields. And those magnetic fields interact to cause a force. And that's how we define electric current. Okay. This is the definition here. All right. No, you've got, to, you've got to learn it off by heart. All right. Okay. So, one ampere of current is the amount of current in each of the two infinitely long straight wires, one meter apart, experiencing a magnetic force per unit length of two times ten to the negative seven newtons. Yes, so that does. There's actually a formula that relates this all. Um, no, 
No, it's the length of the, it's the length. It's 2 times 10 to the negative 7 newtons for the length of the, of the length of it. The distance, as it, as it, the 1 meter, if it goes further apart, then the force actually decreases. But it's for, uh, for 1 meter, the definition is, is defined. The greater the force, yeah. So if you look at it, you look at a force between those two pieces of wire, all right, that will exert a certain force. If you halve it, it will be less. Okay. All right. Um, we'll look at that later on in more detail, but that's your definition. Okay, we also asked to define what um, we also asked to define what resistance is. Now, resistance is the ratio of the voltage to the current at any specific time or in a circuit. So R is equal to V over I. That is your definition of resistance. It's the ratio of your V, your potential difference to your current at any specific point or at any time in a circuit. All right, so that is your definition of resistance. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. Um, it's given here again. Resistance is the ratio of the potential difference applied to device to the current through the device. R is equal to V over I. That's your definition for resistance. Now, we've looked at this formula and we did some um, we did some investigation on it. I just want to remind you of it. This R is equal to rho L over A. Um, you just need to make sure that you know what your L is, what your A is. And to do that, I'm just going to bring up an app that we used. Um, if I can find that, that will be marvelous. Where is it? Oh, yes, here it is. Um, resistance in a wire. Uh, this one over here, remember? So, R is equal to rho. This is your resistivity. This is a property of the material that you're dealing with, all right? It's the basically the amount this, uh, the substance resists the flow of charge, okay? Um, so your resistance is equal to that resistivity, which is something that is for a specific material, is, calc is worked out by experimentation. The L is the length of the conductor or the length of the material. And the A is your cross-sectional area. It's this area over here. So, if I increase my, my cross-sectional area there, that area is increasing there, um, I actually decrease my resistance because basically, in effect, I'm making the wire thicker. So I'm allowing it easier for the electrons to go through. Now remember to work out this area, you use pi r squared, all right? Because it's the cross-sectional area. So it usually is a circle. I mean that that it's usually a, a circle. The wire, um, not always, not all wire is in the form of a circle, but often the ones that you're dealing with uh, is. Okay, so you need to be able to work with that formula. This is your, this works out to be your um, ohms per meter. Oh, it's, well, actually, yeah, it's an ohm per meter value. All right, so it's your, it's the, it's a, the amount of resistance that this material will um, possess for the flow of, of charge. So from that, they can build up resistors. Yes, that's right. So you would, when you look up different materials, this row over here, the resistivity, will be one of those things, like the specific heat capacity or the heat capacity, um, the density. This would be one of those things that would would be there. All right. Next thing that we're looking at here, state Ohm's law. Um, again, in poor, very important. Um, in Ohm's law, the the voltage is proportional to the current provided the temperature is constant. All right. So this is Ohm's law that your potential difference is proportional to your current provided the temperature is constant. Again, a nice definition for that is given 
over here um, where we get it there I think it's over here Ohm's law the current flowing through device is proportional to the potential difference applied across it provided the temperature is constant now R is equal to V over I is not a statement of Ohm's law. You need to state this, that your voltage is proportional to it. Um, okay. Uh, so, uh, if the temperature is different, that means that through one goal, it goes more electricity? Yes, if your temperature changes, therefore your resistance changes. And therefore, you're no longer going to have your um, that proportion relationship. But for a resistor... Um, where the temperature is constant, uh, you have your V is proportional to I. So basically what you do have then, for a, for a substance that obeys Ohm's law, because it's a proportion relationship, your V against I, it should be a straight line going through the origin. All right, that should be the type of graph. This is the graph for an ohmic for an ohmic device. All right, uh, for an ohmic device, um, the resistance remains constant because it's a straight line. The because when I divide my slope here, because the slope remains constant, this change in v over the change in i is a constant. Change in v over change in i is a constant. Therefore, the um, resistance is a constant. So for an ohmic device, your resistance remains the same right the way through. Um, for a non-ohmic device, like for instance, we tried to, we set this up, remember when we did the, the V against I for a, for, a, for a resistor, and then we also did it for a light bulb. Now for a non-ohmic um, device, when I do my V against I, Usually what happens is something like that. All right, you get a curve. You see here that your slope is changing as you're going along. So the slope between the V and the I is changing. Your resistance for this, this is a non-ohmic ohmic device. Um, we get V is not proportional. Um, not proportional to I. Okay. V is not proportional to I, um, and your your resistance is changing. Just wait before you ask. Yep. Yes. This over here. Um, you see here, um, with this R is equal to V over I, it is a, in a way, a statement. Um, but basically, you, you should have it because this R, because when you work out the resistance, you're not working out the slope. You're working out the, the voltage and the current for a specific point, the V over I. It's not, it's, this over here is, it's, yeah, this is, in, in your Ohm's law, we're looking at the slope as remaining the same right the way through. When you're working with resistance, you're not actually looking at the slope, you're just looking at your voltage value divided by your current value, you're looking at that to work out your R. Okay. Yep. What? Yeah. Well, whenever you're dealing with resistance, you're producing heat. And so that heat can change the, change the temperature, and that temperature can re-change the, change the resistance. Because the greater the, the temperature, the more the particles are moving around, the more it resists the flow of charge. So it's not necessarily a mistake, it's just the, the way things are.